This is going to just be a short little video um, documenting the start. Actually, we've already started demolishing, but there's a remodel to convert the house um, to being able to be off-grid using the steam turbine. And the key thing to accomplish that is to get rid of high load electrical appliances. So um, we're getting rid of the electric cooktop, which gas is better anyway for cooking. And um, the oven and microwave have already been removed. Microwave will still use, but the electric oven, that's going away. And this is the kitchen, and it's going to be um, gutted and extended in that direction. And then here are a couple sample tiles. We decided to go with that one. And new cabinet door. We decided to go with that for the cabinets. Um, this is a wood stove insert, and it really doesn't work very well at all. Most of the heat goes up the chimney. Um, so that, you know, it's... It's highly efficient at burning the wood, so they say, although this one always smokes. Um, but if you get it into an ember mode, it's highly efficient at burning the wood. But what it's horrible at is putting the heat it's generated into the house. Most of it just goes up the chimney unless you blow a really loud and noisy fan. So then this is a hallway which was just walled off here, and we've already demolish the walls so this will become the family room bathroom will wall off and to extend the kitchen the laundry room will go upstairs and for full off-grid the dryer will need to be replaced with a um, gas dryer the things like stove dryer oven you don't use very much energy on a monthly basis, but when you use it, it's really intense electrical load if they're electric appliances. And then uh, the real big buster is the electric water heater. And so that's going to go out, and then the whole kitchen will extend down into this zone, making it about another six feet longer as a galley kitchen, which will be nice. So, the electric water heater, that's 4,500 watts. The cooktop can pull, I don't know, something like 12 kilowatts or more if you turned all the burners on at once. And the rain or the oven is something like 3,000 watts or something if it's fully on. So, this house is just, you know, I think it's a pretty typical house. It's not really big and it um, it's 1800 square feet so it's not tiny but it's not giant um, but it can it could pull with the well pump and all those electric appliances something like 20 kilowatts of electricity all at once so this was a closet here and a closet over there and uh, into the two opposing rooms and we've gutted the closets and then are going to convert this into the new laundry room, which makes more sense upstairs with the bedrooms. And so the wa new water heater, a gas one, will go here. And washer dryer will go here. And then um, linen tables and storage and whatnot here. But the gist is, by <clears throat> getting rid of those few really big electrical loads, namely cooktop, oven, electric water heater, and um, electric clothes dryer, you eliminate, um, boy that probably eliminates something like three quarters of the peak load and that drops it down to where your maximum power needed at any one instant in time is only one quarter as much. And so then you replace that the other loads with gas, 
which can uh, supply the energy, but they um, do it. Uh, so I'll say hello here rather than talking at a um, at a wall. So they'll supply all of the energy that you need to dry clothes, cook food, and uh, make hot water. And actually, the hot water will mostly come from the wood chip turbine heat system as well. Um, but gas can do that and it, it doesn't consume a lot of gas per month so you could, all, I mean for cooking you could just buy little um, five gallon propane bottles if you wanted to rather than having a big prote propane tank. We happen to have a 250 gallon propane tank because the house also has a gas furnace but of course um, heating on gas is expensive. It's, you know, well, on average throughout the year, it's about $2,000 a month for electricity plus heating up in our area where the heating load through the winter is um, appreciable. And electricity is something like 100 a month or a little bit more every month year round. Um, probably a lot of that is a hot water heater, although we do have some other things. For the um, hot water heater, the way that will hook up is that the cold water supply to the hot water heater will first run through a copper heat transfer coil in the 2,000 gallon hot water reservoir from the turbine. And so the cold water coming into the gas hot water heater will already be heated up to hot water temperature. So the gas hot water heater will really only have to run now and then um, just to keep the heat that's being lost from conduction, convection at the hot water heater um, kept up to temperature. So it's sort of like just a, a temperature balancing system and if the turbine is down while I'm doing the prototyping for a while then then the gas can heat the hot water. But by making it to where the gas um, only has to keep the water hot, it doesn't have to actually heat it up. There's very little gas used. So with that we probably could realistically, I mean, you know, practically speaking, it wouldn't really be a big hassle to um, run on propane bottles uh, that you just go down. But again, it's easier just to throw um, some propane into the big tank and then, I don't know, probably if we put 50 gallons in there, it'd be a 10-year supply. Um, so, meanwhile, during construction, we're setting up a makeshift kitchen outside. <clears throat> and this is the new gas range that we will be putting in. Actually, we've used it a couple of times out here. And um, it's working real nice. I guess it's a Maytag. I don't know who really makes it, but um, it's a nice convection gas range. And... Um, so I just thought I would create this little video kind of showing where we're headed and what this is and then I'll make a couple videos along the way. The basic heating system, the way it's going to change is that we'll run PEX tubing all around the floor of the downstairs of the house and so there will be runs of the PEX tubing that will have hot water flowing through them controlled by a thermostat um, the hot water coming from the hot water reservoir and then that will be in a thick mortar base and then over the top of that will be tile and then who knows maybe we'll put some um, carpet here and there over the top of that and one of the first things is you know, as I'm walking there's 
squeaky spots in the floor so we'll have to screw the floor down so the tile doesn't crack and also do some uh, liners so that hopefully um, I'm not a tile person and I did construction many years ago but um, this is sort of a learning curve for me and I just watched a bunch of YouTube videos on how to do it and here's um, an, an insight into the way somebody else is doing it and then over the years we'll see how well it works anyway so that's the start of the home remodel and here's um, how things started out and then some day down the road hopefully in a month or so we'll have a new video showing a completely new kitchen